Welcome back, Crafty Bee Maker of Things. Back to casting, loose casting, vintage trophy topper, this goddess topper. I want to reproduce her in aluminum. This is zinc. doesn't really matter what it's made of, but I want to make another one. First thing you have to ask yourself, will this come out of the sand? Let's get started, and I'm going to cover it all as fast as I can. So I'm just going to lay it flat down her wings flat down but first of all we got to cover it with some foundry powder talcum powder release agent something so that sand won't stick to our pattern all right before we get no we are started we are into this thing you have to establish will this goddess come out of the sand if I pack sand on both sides of her, can I split the mold and get it apart? And the answer is yes. You can see it's got all of the correct angles. Now, let's just say you were going to try to cast it this way. You pack the sand in. If you're going to remove that top mold, this wing is just going to break in the sand. It has to be this way. Got the mold flipped over. Now it's time to start carving in that parting line. I'm just going to kind of roughly get that sand away. Got to dig down halfway, the best that we can, all the way around the wing goddess. So I just use my fingers, kind of dig it around. I'll start doing some more detail carving with little tools, and I'll be using a paintbrush and other things. But for starters, you just dig it away. Kind of be a little cautious around your edge there, edge of your flask. You don't want to bump over all the way because then the hot metal will just pour out onto the floor. So that's, that's, that's the rough dig right there. Now we're going to come in and start detailing. Got my little carving tool. I'm going to get down around her hands, and she's holding some kind of round flower arrangement. That'll come soon. Then I'm just going to start working on that parting line all the way around, right around her legs there. That's pretty close to half. And then I take this little block of wood that I use. And I want to press that in there just to stiffen that edge up because when we put the other flask on and fill it full of sand, it's going to pack right to that. So the cleaner we get that line next to the pattern, the better it will cast, be less cleanup. up. won't have as much to grind or to sand that flash off. And there will be some on the edges. There it is. Now I have to dig down, try to get halfway around that round floral thing that she is holding. Paintbrush works real nice to blend all of that, blend that in. Now I'm going to push. I'm going to, I want to try to get that sand as firm as I can around that, I think it's a wreath. Yeah, it is. Get it down halfway. It just takes time, just patience and time. This whole process probably took me 10 minutes, 15 minutes to carve all this. So it is time consuming, but it's also super fun. So I'm going to tap the pattern. I want to try to loosen that up just a little bit and see if anything happens for parting lines. If they're too high, the sand will actually start to crack. You'll see it, then you just kind of kind of dig it out a little bit. So the pattern is getting loose in the sand. That's that's really good. Now you can see around that base, the little cracks in the sand there. That means the parting line's too high. See the movement right there. I'm pointing at it. So you just go in there and carve that back out. Going to use the tail end of this little file. I want to try to get that sand packed in as tight as I can in that little area. Going to loosely move her and just kind of try to pry that pattern out. Because I want to know that it's going to come out before I go any further. And it looks like it's going to come out right there. And I'm going to push her right back into the sand. Now I can move forward with the other 
flask, just take this paintbrush, kind of clean things up, smooth out all of the, the mold, and then just kind of blow all that sand out of there. I don't want to use compressed air here, end up blowing a big chunk of the mold away. More talcum powder, foundry dust, foundry part, parting dust, whatever you want to call it. Another flask goes on, and I notice it has a crack in it. I would have picked a different one. Then the sand, you know the routine. So I'm not going to take any chances on locating the sprue and riser, the fill hole and the exit tube. I'm going to poke this piece of welding wire through so I, right there so I can see exactly where the mold is because I just didn't want to take a chance doing it blind. And then I just pick up the little witness hole and I'll drive the sprue and riser in. I could push it in by hand, but it's just sometimes as easy just to tap it in. I use a funnel to kind of open up that hole a little bit so it just makes a little wider mouth to, um, to fill. Hot lava, hot lava. Hot flame, hot flame. Time to carve in some gating. I want to get one into the wings and then one down by the feet or the, the base of the goddess. So I'm just carving over. You can see the witness from my, my sprue and riser when I just drove it in with the hammer. I went in a little bit deeper so I know exactly where, they're at, where they are at. Now I'm just going to hand freestyle carve this one over. So when the metal comes down, the sprue riser, it will go right down through that channel and fill in four different areas. Gonna do it on the other side, it's already done. Now it's time to lift it out of there. This is the make or break moment. If you break sand away, no worries, it will just fill up full of aluminum and you will have to grind or cut it away. So it's best to not try to break out any sand. Any sand that breaks out is something you are gonna have to remove later after you pour it with a grinder or a file. Burr, carbide burr. So a little touch up right here, right where the gating meets the actual mold. Don't want any ridges in there. And then I'm just gonna blow it all out, put it together. You're ready to go. You've got your furnace up and running. You've put your scrap in there. How long or when do you pour that aluminum? How do you know when it's warm enough, hot enough? What I have learned over the years is I put my metal in there and once it goes liquid, you're gonna get a little stir. Once it goes liquid, I normally go like five, maybe a few more minutes than that, and that is gonna get you around 1300 degrees. It melts somewhere around 1250, 1280. Don't quote me on it because I'm probably wrong. But for today, the goddess has those super thin wings. So that is gonna require more heat because what happens with thin molds is you pour, they get into the cavity and they go, Urgh! They hit the brakes because it solidifies, it freezes up, game over. So, with that being said, I hope this turns out today because of the thin wings. I have not poured one of these. And if it did not turn out, I'm gonna post it anyway to just show you what happens, and it happens a lot. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. So when you're gonna pour, follow through. Get the flow started and keep it fast and as full as you can the truth now just because I poured it and it did fill up and came out the riser quite nicely and, and fast I have a I'm gonna say that this without looking this mold there is possibly a 10 to 90 percent chance that it turned out and I'm gonna lean towards 90 so here we go. There she is. There's the behind of the goddess. That was decent. That is very, very decent. Right there. As I expected, 
That did not turn out, but you're gonna have to, there's some cleanup, but for the most part, the back looks really good. Wait till you see the other. There she is. It went really well. That was a good pour. Now you understand the parting lines and the mimicking of the molds, no matter what you carve on the bottom, when you put the top on, it's just going to follow what you carved. And that's what I did there. So I'm going to run over to the bandsaw real fast and trim her all up. Let's see what it looks like. The wind got us. Start to finish, another good casting project in the books, and it just kind of makes me wanna, isn't she love?